Hello, my name is Molly Christensen. I'm an economics teacher at the California School for the Deaf in Fremont, and I'm also this year working collaboratively with the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco in their education advisory team. Today's webinar will introduce you to a lot of their resources that will aid you in teaching your deaf students about personal finance and the economy in general. I'll be expanding on five different areas, but there are a lot more resources. You can find them here. The Federal Reserve Bank was founded by the Federal Reserve Act in 1913. Signed by President Wilson, that law established the Fed, commonly referred to as the Fed. What, is the what are the responsibilities of the Fed? First, to supervise and regulate the national banks, to oversee payment services, including any payment services like cash distribution, electronic payments, transfers, and checks. The third area is to decide monetary policy to keep our economy stable. Each district has an independently run bank, and here we are in District 12. And the headquarters is in San Francisco, California. And above that is the Board of Governors, which is located and run in Washington, D.C. They work more closely with Congress and the President. Our 12th district includes the nine Western states. Chair the Fed game. I love this game for students. It's very interactive and it allows students to become the, the head of the Federal Reserve Bank and make decisions in that role about monetary policy. And as they make those decisions, it, it leads them to different possibilities. For example, students will be allowed to change the federal funds rate. As they increase or decrease that rate, it will impact both unemployment and inflation, price increases. And that they'll see the impacts of those decisions made high up on their lives. If they increase or decrease the rate, it will either stimulate the economy or lessen economic activity. I love this activity because students discover on their own without teacher lectures, and they are able to realize the importance of, the, of that role. The best application of this is to start with a full classroom with everyone together looking at the screen. If there are no changes in the federal funds rate, if we just leave it alone, what happens to our economy? After you discover that, then you can start partnering up to play the game together. Why partners? It's a great opportunity to discuss, test errors, and improve their strategic thinking. It's a great game for economic students at the high school level. If you go to the website, there are different lesson plans ready for teachers to look through and choose the level appropriate for their students. Graphs, numbers, data collection, the interpretation of graphs, those are skills our students really need. 
but we don't want to have to be coming up with the numbers all the time. We want real world information, right? Well, I have something for you. It's called data post. Those are current numbers with sample graphs that you can use in your classroom today. We'll be using those graphs to show you, for example, GDP, the unemployment rate, inflation, economic inequality, and various other indicators. You can use that information to discuss during class, and you can access the slides on the internet. You can show the students the slides, discuss them, interpret them, and figure out the meaning. It's also possible to send them home for homework. They get some of the ideas outside of the classroom, called a flipped classroom, and then when they come back to class, you are able to discuss in more depth. Some of the slides um, are available for download, or you can look at them directly on the internet. And some of the slides also have an associated um, video, and that video expands upon some of the information or terminology associated with interpreting the graphs. This is a great activity for math classes, personal finance perhaps, and especially, for sure, a social studies classroom. Let's take advantage of this opportunity for your students to learn straight from the top economist in the Federal Reserve Bank. They often post short videos about current event topics related to the economy. Visuals are often included in these videos. If you go in, you will see the possibilities. I suggest you clip, click on the YouTube video because the captions are of high quality. The best audience for this video is high school or community college level. What is this? Oh, it's money that's been shredded. Old money. Shoot. Well, where did I get this from? The San Francisco Federal Reserve Bank. It is possible to go in person and take a tour of the facilities, and you can get your own. And if not, there are also a lot of resources available online related to currency from the past uh, in America. That currency exhibit is one of the biggest and most complete, starting from the 13 colonies, showing their different money through to the Civil War and the start of the greenbacks, through World War II and different military currencies. Wow, it's a very impressive exhibit. I suggest you use it with your class and create a timeline a historical timeline of the United States and how our currency shows our changing values and our changing symbols and how those coincide with events over time. Students will be fascinated. Invest in what's next. We're always encouraging our students to think about the future, different career paths, college, and this is a resource to help you analyze that. High school students will be able to go in and make an account, a personal account of their own information, to decide what kind of lifestyle they want, what kind of major will fit them, and how can college uh, help them meet their career goals. 
I like this website because it's very personable to students and also very visual. For example, they make a graph that helps students understand the connections between the educational levels and the incomes they might be paid in the future. I suggest you visit this website, invest in what's next. One warning, the website is still in a beta mode but it's still worth getting started now. I just explained and touched on a few of the resources available for you. There are many more resources that you can find at frbsf.org education and federalreserveeducation.org. Now I'd like to ask you, which of the resources will you be applying or using in your classroom soon? Or maybe, which of these resources will you be sharing with a colleague to help them uh, use in their classroom? Please, I would love to interact with you. Be in touch through email or also video phone anytime. Be in touch.